What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to create this really minimal desktop navigation layout. It's super simple. You just add a drop down to your main navigation and then drag all of your links into it. And that works great on desktop. You get this really minimal drop down. But the problem is on mobile, when you open your menu, you have to click into the menu folder in order to access all of your links. And obviously this is a really bad user experience. So I'm gonna show you in today's video how to take all of these links and make sure that they're on this first page of the navigation menu. So it's gonna be a really good one and it actually doesn't take that much CSS at all. I'm gonna walk through it step by step. So let's get started. So I have dragged all of my pages into a drop-down folder and I've just named the drop-down folder menu and it has a URL, URL slug of menu. So um, what you call it doesn't really matter. So if you're working in other languages, um, that's fine. It doesn't have to be called this. All you have to do is just add a drop-down to the menu, call it whatever you want, and then add all your pages to it. And that's how you get this uh, hover effect where you hover over menu and then you get all the pages on your site. So in order to fix things on the mobile menu, let's go ahead and right click and then click inspect and that'll bring up our Chrome inspect tools. If your Chrome inspect tools don't open in a new window like this, you can click the three dots. You know, yours might open docked to like the bottom or the right or the left. Click this button and it'll undock it into a separate window. That's how I prefer to work because you can just move it around. I always move it to my second monitor when I'm just working on my own. So um, after you have your Chrome inspect tools open, um, basically we can just look at the structure of the mobile navigation folder. So here we have the menu nav list, and then we have the data folder root and then data folder menu. So this root is the main menu where we have our menu folder that you then have to click into in order to see the other links. So if I click that, um, we now see that the data folder menu element is the one that now has the header menu folder active and it slides over. So if I click back, we can go back to our Chrome inspect tools and now the, the main root folder is the one that has the header menu nav folder active class. So basically they're just switching whichever the active menu is and just sliding it uh, and when it's in view, it has a translate X of zero. And when it's out of view, you can see this one has a translate X of 100%. So it's translating it to the right 100%. So basically all we need to do is hide the root folder. So this one doesn't show and then slide this uh, data folder menu element. We need to slide it, not translate X of 100%, but we want to translate X of zero. So that way it's in the frame. So it's a pretty simple like game plan that we have here. Um, it just comes down to the selectors that we use to make sure that this is working you know, appropriately. So basically um, I wanna make sure that the, the folders that I'm targeting are in the header menu nav list. It just sort of ensures that um, in case there were elements that had these classes elsewhere in the site, uh, that we're just restricting our CSS targeting to the ones in the header menu nav list. Now there's probably no way that there are other folders besides uh, the ones in this list, but I'm just being extra cautious. It's the best way to write CSS is very cautiously, um, especially because we're not in control of the HTML changes that Squarespace makes. So we wanna make sure that our CSS is pretty darn specific and we're not you know, accidentally changing other things on the site. So I'm gonna take this header menu nav list and that's a class and we target classes in CSS with a period. Now I'll paste in that class name. Now inside of the header menu nav list, we wanna take that root folder. So that's like the, the main folder where all your links normally would appear. And we can target data attributes by um, opening brackets. So these are normal square brackets and I can paste in that data folder root. So now we're, we're targeting this element here and we wanna go ahead and open up some curly brackets now and give it a display of none. So that'll hide this main menu, which is exactly what we wanna do. And now we wanna target this menu and make sure we slide it over to the left for a transform translate X of zero. 
Uh, we could target this folder by its data folder uh, menu name. So this is just the URL slug of the folder. So you'll see if I changed the dropdown, let me go to the pages panel. If I changed the URL slug, so like, let's say this was like a different language, but I'll just say example, and this will be example, and we can do example. So pretend this is, you know, the word for a folder in a different language. If we go to the inspect, we'll open up our header menu nav list. So now you can see the data folder name here is now slash example. So it just takes the URL slug of whatever you name your folder. So that's why I don't want to target that folder um, because I can't, I, I don't want to target it by a data folder forward slash menu because I can't assume that everyone is going to be typing in menu in English. Um, you know, people in other languages might be using this CSS. So what we want to do instead, let me go ahead and target, open up our inspect tools again. So rather than doing a data folder and targeting it by forward slash menu, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to target a header menu nav folder. Let me stretch that out. So I'm going to target this element by its class of header menu nav folder, but that's not good enough because that would be selecting both like this this main root one also has a header menu nav folder class. So if I only want to target this menu here, what I can do is I can say, I want to target a header menu nav folder that comes after an element with a data folder of root. And the way that we can do that, if I go back to my custom CSS window, and by the way, I'm navigating, quick navigating like this. If you click in the panel and then click the forward slash, same as the question mark key, then you can search for panels. So. CSS and then enter and now I'm back to my custom CSS window. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target the data folder root element. So I can actually just, since I've already selected that element there. So we have, we're at the data folder root now and we wanna select the next immediate element that has a class of header menu nav folder. And the way that we can do that in CSS is you can select an immediate sibling using the plus sign and now we target the class of header menu nav folder and open up our curly brackets and it doesn't matter if you have spaces here or not um, i'll add spaces just to make it a little bit cleaner uh, but you don't have to so now we're selecting this header menu nav folder it's the immediate element that follows this element here the root folder and all we have to do is go transform translate X and we're gonna do zero. Boom, and it just slides back into place, which is perfect. So now the only thing that we have to do is hide this back. So let me right click directly on it and click inspect, and that'll take us to this um, like back element. And so if we kind of navigate up the elements here, um, we wanna find like the outermost uh, selector here for this element. So like they have elements here that this is the actual back button, this is the back arrow, um, they have this uh, container here for these two elements that they add margin to. So if we were, we don't wanna select these inside things because then we wanna hide the whole thing. Um, so I'm gonna go to the outermost element uh, of this back button and so that's the, it has a class of header menu controls. And so that's how I'm gonna hide this whole element. So let me copy this header menu controls class. And I'm going slow and very specific here because I'm trying to also go through my explanation of why I'm choosing the classes that I'm choosing. Um, so inside of these curly brackets now, because this back button is not inside the, the root menu, it's inside of this like internal data folder menu. So inside of these curly brackets, I'm going to add our header menu controls. I'm going to give them a display of none and then it hides them. So that's perfect. So the reason that I've nested this CSS, so this is something that we can do because the custom CSS window uses the less preprocessor. Now, normal CSS is also adding nesting, but it's not very well supported yet. But us Squarespace CSS 
writers, um, you and me, we get to do this because Squarespace has the less preprocessor built into the Squarespace CSS menu, and it lets us do some like fancy things. And nesting is one of them. So basically, this is combining um, this selector with whatever comes before it. So inside of this element, we're now looking for this element. So it's the same exact thing as if we were to rewrite this whole thing and then also add this to our selector list. Um, so you can see it just saves a bunch of CSS because we don't have to rewrite the parent selector. Um, so we're still doing the same thing in the header menu nav list. We're looking for the root folder. We're then looking for the next immediate um, following element. That's the header menu nav folder. And then inside of that folder, we're looking for the header menu nav controls and giving them display of none. So rather than having to rewrite out everything like this, nesting just allows you to sort of piggyback off of the parent selector so that we've ar already written. And now we can just target the header menu nav controls in here and give them a display of none. And that's it. So that's our final CSS. Just a couple lines here, um, very simple. And uh, now when we open the menu, we have our internal navigation links as sort of being our main menu nav links. We don't have to click into the folder anymore. Now, I this tutorial was a request. Um, I have a tutorial request form on my website. So if you go to tutorials, you can request a tutorial. I've had uh, several people reach out about this, so I thought it was definitely time to make a video about it. And this is a very like intentional, minimal menu design here. Um, but I also do want to show off my hamburger menu on desktop. So if you wanted it to be more of a slide out rather than just a little drop down in the corner, um, I have a plugin. It's my hamburger menu on desktop plugin. It's specifically for Squarespace version 7.1. It's only 20 bucks and it allows you to do this. Um, and I have CSS in there where instead of a hamburger menu icon, this could say menu. And when you open it, it would change to the word close. And then when you close it, you know, it would go back to the word menu. So this could be another example of, you know, a minimal kind of slide out that's um, a different alternative to like the main Squarespace navigation. Um, this is one of my more popular plugins. So definitely worth checking out. But if you want to just stick to this really minimal kind of drop down where it's in the upper right hand corner, uh, this CSS is going to help you out with that mobile view. All right, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel for more Squarespace customization content like this. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.